Hello everyone and welcome to another plug side chat. I guess a slightly different format for it, but uh, yeah, I'm just hanging out here in Yuba City, uh, topping up my car at, at the Electrify America charger. Again, started right up, no problems. Uh, I guess it's, it's great, to, uh, great to be whitelisted. But anyway, uh, I wanted to talk about um, a subject that came up recently. TFL, uh, Roman on his podcast, uh, was talking about electric vehicles or in, in particular electric trucks that were towing. And they, you know, they were using a Rivian R1T owner as an example, someone uh, who recently drove or a couple that recently drove from Illinois uh, down to California towing a Mustang on a trailer in the back of it. So this, uh, you know, opens up a whole can of worms, right? Because we're finally seeing these uh, electric trucks coming to market that are specifically designed with towing in mind, right? The Rivian R1T has a very impressive 11,000 pound tow capacity. The GMC Hummer EV, which is now getting to customers' hands, uh, has a 7,000 pound towing capacity. So these trucks are fully capable of towing, you know, substantial trailers. And a lot of the time when you're towing a substantial trailer, yeah, it could be a local job, but more often than not, you're traveling a fairly long distance. And so they posed a question about, well, are electric trucks actually ready to go mainstream? And in particular, talking about this aspect of towing, right? So they referenced when they attempted to tow a fairly light trailer in a Tesla Model X uh, about, I, I don't know, it's like 1,000, 1,500 miles. And they realized they were gonna have to stop every 100 miles and basically charge to full. And they, they actually abandoned that trip, TFL abandoned that trip uh, because they didn't think it was realistic, they didn't think it was reasonable. So they were looking at this R1T owner's trip and they were sort of analyzing it. And like I said, they posed that question of whether they thought electric trucks uh, were ready to go mainstream in light of the fact that this R1T owner was also having to stop every hundred miles or so. Now, what they didn't get into was how much time this owner was spending charging, but they did uh, provide a fairly specific uh, range of between 16% and like 80%. Now, one of the things I want to, um, I feel, say is that I, I do feel a little bit validated by this because a while ago I posted a video on my sort of heuristic rule of thumb for uh, the range that electric trucks can expect uh, when towing, right? What owners can expect from their truck when towing. And the, the main premise of that is I, I advise people to pay attention to the usable battery capacity rather than whatever it is uh, the uh, automaker has rated the range for. Because when you're talking about towing, that's a whole nother level of energy expenditure that you're not going to see uh, in a uh, in, in basically in a car that's you know following its rated range, right? Essentially, if you're at freeway speeds, you should only expect about 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour in a truck, and when you're at at freeway speeds towing, you should really only expect about one mile per kilowatt hour. Now the R1T has a, a 135 kilowatt hour battery pack and given that they were using about 65 percent of it to go 100 miles and they're not really maxing out the towing capacity we don't know how fast they were driving it sort of falls within that range of somewhere between one and 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour that they were using um, so i do feel that my heuristic is sort of standing up to actual real world examples but on top of that there's something that Roman wasn't really considering uh, when discussing this is that those 100 mile stops aren't necessarily a limitation of the truck, right? Because what you're looking at is they were primarily relying on Electrify America chargers. Well, Electrify America has been placing its chargers about every 100 to 120 miles. So by stopping every 100 miles, it doesn't necessarily mean that the R1T is only able to go 100 miles while towing between charging stops. 
it means that it's not capable of doing say 200 to 250 miles which would be needed to jump essentially a charger uh, because right now you're basically having to hit every charger on a route because of how they are spaced right so it has less to do with the truck's capability and it's more indicative of how the network is built uh, and we are likely to see trucks in the near future that you know even when towing that will be able to skip at least one uh, electrify america charger on a route between charging stops right we're talking about somewhere between 200 to 250 miles of range between charging stops um, now the other aspect of it and uh, they did mention it and to me this is sort of the biggest question about uh EV trucks or any EV that tows right now is is the network up to it, right? Because right now, most networks are not building chargers, especially travel-focused chargers that support full pull-through parking. And that's gonna be, I think, the biggest hurdle. So it's, again, not on the EV truck itself, but on the infrastructure. Uh, and this is true of Tesla with it for their superchargers as well. Their superchargers are not equipped for full pull through trucks with 20 to 30 foot trailers. They're just not, uh, not capable of supporting that right now. But outside of that, right, getting back to the core of the argument over the trucks themselves, whether or not they are capable of going mainstream, um, I think the answer is yes to a certain extent. Now, I will say no in that they are not ready to replace gas-powered trucks completely. And the main reason for that is uh, they just don't have the towing capacity. Right now, sure, the R1T has 11,000 pounds. And for someone who's not a truck person, they hear 11,000 pounds, they say, wow, that's impressive, that's significant. 11,000 pounds is not actually that much. That's actually what you would expect from a basically entry-level full-size truck, uh, an actual heavy-duty truck, they have tow ratings of over 30,000 pounds. So right now, it's not just like EV trucks literally cannot replace gasoline-powered trucks as heavy-duty tow rigs because they don't even have the towing capacity. So when we finally start to see EV trucks that are rated, for 20 to 25 to 30,000 pounds of towing capacity, then we can have, start having that discussion about completely phasing out gasoline powered trucks and replacing them with EV trucks. In the meantime, I would say that the focus should be on entry level sort of full size trucks and under, right? So nothing over a F-150 class, nothing over a, a Chevy Silverado a 1500 class, that sort of thing. Nothing over that uh, entry level half ton full size truck class. And then at that point, yes, I think EV truck itself is capable of replacing gasoline powered equivalents, except for again, the network and not necessarily the coverage, but the way the coverage is configured, right? The site design, uh, how they're configured, what they're designed to, to support. Uh, because I think what's being missed in this is people are applying all sorts of crazy metrics and standards. I think they're missing the point and I think we already have an objective standard that simplifies things. And it's the federal regulations for truckers because they have very specific hours that are set. And if you use those as a guidepost, uh, then I think EV trucks compared to their equivalent, like I said, half ton full size truck counterparts are fully capable of going mainstream. And, and that metric is essentially uh, truck drivers are given a 24 hour period. Within that 24 hour period, they can do no more than 11 hours of driving, right, in a 14 hour window. So 11 hours of driving, three hours off, and then 10 hours before their next shift starts. So that's that 24 hour window. And if you look at say, let's, let's say the Chevrolet Silverado E. Chevy hasn't released a lot of specs on it yet, but what we know is that it's using it up to a 200 kilowatt hour 
Ultium battery pack. And what we know is the Ultium's capabilities based on what we've seen for the Cadillac Lyric and the GMC Hummer EV. What that means is it can charge up about 65 to 70% in 30 minutes which is probably the window you wanna shoot for, like that R1T uh, owner that was driving across the country towing the Mustang, that's sort of the limit that you wanna look for is uh, these sort of 30 minute stops that would fit into your day normally. Well, applying my metric of one mile per kilowatt hour when towing, that's 200 miles, that's 200 miles at a full battery, and it's about 140 miles between stops, right? Uh, between 30 minute stops. So you can actually do the math from there and see that as long as you start your day with a full charge, you can pretty much drive 65 to 70 miles an hour, maybe even 75 miles an hour, uh, and you will still fit the three hours of charging within that 14 hour window because you know you're only allowed to drive for 11 hours driving 11 hours at that clip is not going to require six 30 minute charging sessions you're you're going to run out of time essentially run out of driving time before the battery is exhausted for that last leg and the reason i say it's important that you're starting off at a full battery is as long as these trucks can recharge fully in a 10 hour off period, then you're good. Well, Chevrolet Silverado E will come with an optional 20 kilowatt onboard charger. A 20 kilowatt onboard charger will charge a 200 kilowatt hour pack from nearly empty to full in about 10 hours. So as long as hotels, motels, places where you're gonna spend overnight have those higher power 20 kilowatt level two AC chargers that you can use to slow charge overnight. Well, now you're talking about a truck that can do six, seven, 800 miles a day while towing within what is again, a objective federal standard and regulation in that regard. Like I said, as long as you're looking at EV trucks fairly, and, and when I say that, I mean put them in the class where they're currently competing, which is half ton, full size trucks. Right now, they're ready to go mainstream based on their capabilities alone. The only thing is, is the infrastructure up to it. And right now, I would say no. Um, again, not without detaching your trailer, not without hunting and pecking for 350 kilowatt or faster chargers, it's not really up to it. But I'll say this, I bought my Chevrolet Bolt EV when it was still a year or two ahead of the charging infrastructure in California. And it was able to serve my needs, it was able to get me to save on gasoline costs, it was able to get me to basically cut out gasoline for my everyday life, even though it was a year or two before the public charging infrastructure started catching up to the point where now I can basically drive anywhere in the state with chargers that actually maximize my car rather than relying on chargers where it was only charging my car at half of its capacity or half of its capability. The same is going to be true of EV trucks. When they're released in the next year or two, uh, they're gonna be fully capable of seven, eight, 900 mile trips a day. Uh, like I said, six, seven, 800 miles while towing. Um, fitting within those federal regulations and guidelines of an 11 hour uh, limit to driving per day. Uh, but the infrastructure is still gonna need to catch up. It's still gonna need to improve. So I'd love to hear what you think. What do you think about EV trucks ma being mainstream? What do you think about uh, making sure that we fit them into the niche where they are, where they're not heavy duty trucks and we're not asking them to replace heavy duty trucks. We're asking them to replace half ton, uh, full-size trucks. Uh, I, I'd also like to reach out to TFL. If you want to do a podcast and then maybe invite me on as a guest speaker, there's a lot to this subject that I like to talk about in terms of infrastructure, in terms of capabilities, in terms of what truck owners should be looking for, and my predictions for what we can expect for EV trucks in the future. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.